Shalom lechulam. Hello, everybody. Welcome to part two of our lessons on Hebrew question words. In this video, we're going to see how to ask why, how, how much, how many, which in Hebrew. First of all, let's start by reviewing our Hebrew personal pronouns. Ani, that's I or I am or me. Ata, that's you when talking to a male. At, that's you when addressing a female. Anachnu, that's we or us. Atem, when talking to males, that's that saying you. Aten. That means you when talking to a group of females. Who means he. He means she. Hem means they when referring to a group of masculine subjects or, or masculine words or masculine people. Hen means they when referring to females. Let's also review the Hebrew demonstrative pronouns. Ze means it, this, or this one when referring to a masculine subject. Zot, zo, or zu uh, means that they all mean it, this, or this one when referring to a feminine subject. And these ones or those ones, um, for that we use ele or elu. Ele means these or those, these ones or those ones, right? When we're talking about plural subjects, we can also use elu sometimes. Now let's talk about Hebrew question words. In a previous video, we saw these four words. Me, that's who. Ma, that means what. Matai, that means when. Eifo, that means where. This time, we're going to see Eifo, where. We actually saw this in the previous video, so we're going to see Eifo again. We're going to see Lama, which means why. We're going to see Eik, which means how. We're going to see Kama, that means how many or how much. And we're going to see the three ways to say, to ask which. So eze means which when we're referring to something singular and masculine. Ezo, that also means which, but when we're referring to something singular and feminine. And elu, elu also means which, but it's referring to something uh, plural is referring to a subject that is in a plural form. So we're going to see all of these question words in a scenario. So in a previous video, we saw Sarah who got a visit from her grandfather and she's wondering where her grandma is. So um, she asks her grandfather, A for Savta, A for Savta. Eifo means where, and Safta means grandma, grandmother. So that's literally saying, where grandma? <laughs> so that's the way we, we say, where is grandma in Hebrew? Eifo Savta. He babait. He means she. Babait means at home or in, in the house. So he babait, literally, grandpa is saying she's she in house. <laughs> so that's the Hebrew way of saying she's at home. He babait. And Sarah asks, Lama savta hola? Savta hola? So Lama, that means why. Savta means grandma. And hola means sick when we're referring to a female. So, lama savta hola. And if we were referring to a male, um, we would have said hole. So, if she's asking, is grandpa sick? Saba hole. P 
because Saba is a, a male, but in this case, she's referring to her grandmother. So we say, Hola. Uh, that is the way we say sick when referring to somebody who's feminine. So, Lama, Savta Hola. Why? Grandma sick? <laughs> so that's how we say, Why? Is grandma sick? Lama, that means why? No. So grandpa says that grandma's not sick. So he says lo hi pashut ayefa. Lo means no. He means she. Pashut means just or simply. Pashut just. Ayefa tired. Tired ayefa. Uh, means tired when we're referring to a female. If it were grandpa, we would say ayef. Ayef uh, is the masculine form of tired, and ayefa is the feminine form. No. He pashut ayefa. And Sarah says, savta hamiskina. Savta means grandma. Ha means the. Miskina means poor. So misken is poor when referring to somebody who is masculine. Miskena is uh, the feminine version of the word poor. So savta miskena, grandma the poor. <laughs> That's how we say poor grandma. Savta miskena. And Sarah asks her grandfather, Veata saba, ata ayef, Veata saba, ata ayef. So ata means you when addressing a male person. So ve means and, ata means you, uh, referring to a masculine. Saba means grandfather. Okay, ayef means tired when we're referring to a masculine person. So ve ata saba, ata ayef, that's literally, and you, grandpa. You tired? <laughs> so that's how we say, and you, Grandpa, are you tired? Ken. Ani ayef meod biglal atachbua tziburit. Ken means yes. Previously, we, we saw lo, which means no. So lo means no. Ken means yes. And Grandpa says, Ken, ani ayef meod. I am very tired. So, ani means I am or I. Ayef means tired and meod means very. So, in English we say uh, very tired. So, but uh, in Hebrew it's uh, you say tired first before saying very. So, ayef means tired, meod means very. So, t I am tired very. <laughs> so, that's how we say it in Hebrew. So, ken ani ayef meod. Yes, I am very tired. Now, biglal means because or because of. Had means the. Takbura means transport. And hatziburit, that means uh, the public. So, the, the public transport. But in Hebrew, we say the transport, which is public. So, hatakbura, the transport. Hatziburit, which is public. Okay, the public. So, Hatakhbura Hatziburit, public transport. That's how, how we say public transport in Hebrew. So, he says, Ken, Ani Ayef Meod, Biglal Hatakhbura Hatziburit. Biglal Hatakhbura Hatziburit, because of the public transport. Ken, Ani Ayef Meod, Biglal Hatakhbura Hatziburit. And that makes Sarah wonder, how did her grandpa get there <laughs> to make him so tired? So, ik, ik means how. Ik higata lechan. Ik higata lechan. How, that's ik higata, that means you arrived. Lechan means here. So, literally, ik higata lechan. Uh, saying, 
how you arrived here, <laughs> how did you get here? That's what she's actually saying. Ek higata lechan. Ek means how. Barakevet uvotobus. Grandpa says he came by train and by bus. Barakevet uh, literally means in train. And uba autobus, uba autobus, u means and. Now, v means and, but when you, it comes before a word where you uh, you put your lips together, b, b, <laughs> uba autobus. So instead of saying v, ba autobus, of course, the v means and, but uh, we say u uh, instead of v because b, the, the next uh, sound is is the sound produced by lips coming together. So, barakevet uba autobus, literally in train and in bus, because be means in, um, but we pronounce it as ba, ba here. Barakevet uba autobus, so by train and by bus. Barakevet uba autobus. Now, Sarah asks, which train? So, which um, in Hebrew is Ezo? Ezo is what we use when we refer to something that is singular or and feminine. So, Rakevet, the Hebrew word for train, is a feminine noun. So, we use Ezo um, as the word f uh, which means which. Ezo Rakevet, which train? Hakula. So, Ha means the, and khula means blue. It is the feminine form of the word blue, and it's referring to rakevet, which is a feminine noun. So that's why we use khula instead of kahol, which also means blue, but when referring to masculine subjects. Sarah also asks, Eze otobus? Eze otobus? So, Eze also means which, <laughs> like Ezo. But since she's referring to Otobus, which is a masculine noun, uh, we use the word uh, Eze. Eze means which when we're referring to a masculine noun. So Eze Otobus. Eze Otobus means which bus. Hayoko. So Grandpa says he took the green bus. <laughs> he says, Hayarok. So since autobus is a masculine noun, we use the masculine form of the adjective green, Yarok. And finally, Sarah asks, which roots? Which? So here's another way of saying which. So uh, Ezo it means which when referring to somebody who's uh, feminine. Uh, and Eze also means which when referring to a masculine subject. But when it's a plural subject like roots, so that's plural, we say Elu. So Elu Maslulim. So Maslulim, uh, that means roots. Elu means which when referring to a plural subject. So Elu Maslulim, which roots? So there we go. Now we know why Grandpa is so tired. He took the long way. He said, The uh, long. Okay. Aruk means long. Arukim means uh, long when referring to something plural. So maslulim, the roots are the long ones. That That's the root. He, the, those are roots he took. So hamaslulim haarukim. Literally, the roots, the long. He took the long roots. Now, Sarah's next question begins with Kama. Kama, how many, how much, or how long? Right. So, Kama zman zilakach. Kama zman zilakach. How much time did this it took? That's literally what she's saying. Kama, how many, or how long? Zman. Uh, is uh, time. That's the Hebrew word for time. Zman. Ze means this. And lakach um, is uh, past tense. It, it means it took. OK, 
Okay, that's the Hebrew word in the past tense for it took. So, kama zman zilakach. Kama, how long? Zman, time or how long? Kama could be how long or how much. Kama zman, how much time? Zilakach. This it took. So, kama zman zilakach. How much time did it take? Sha'a v'chetzi. Sha'a. Sha'a means hour or one hour. Va, ve means and. In this case, um, before this word chetzi, uh, we pronounce it as va instead of ve. That means and. Sha'a va chetzi. One hour and a half. Chetzi means half. So grandpa is saying hour and half. Sha'a va chetzi. One hour and a half. Sha'a <laughs> v'chetzi. Hmm, let's see if you remembered. So, I invite you to pronounce each word after me. And when you pronounce the word, try to think uh, uh, about what that means. Try to remember if, if you can. If you can't, of course, you can always replay the video. But try if you, and see if you remember. So let's go. Kama. Kama. Efo. Efo. Eze. Eze. Lama. Lama. Ezo. Ezo. Elu. Elu. Ek. Ek. Okay, let's see what they mean. So, kama, how much? Efo, where? Which um, can mean a lot, can be said in many ways. So, eze means which when referring to a singular masculine subject. Ezo um, is also which, but referring to a singular feminine subject. And elu also means which, but it's referring to a subject that is in plural form. Lama, that means why, and ik, ik means how. So now you know the Hebrew question words uh, Lama, ik, ezo, eze, elu, and kama. So you know how to say why, how, how much, how many, and which in Hebrew. I hope this video has been useful. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, please feel free to do so. Um, subscribe to the Hebrew for Learners channel and hit the notification bell so you get updated on new releases of lessons. Happy learning! Bye!